Hey everyone, and welcome to the sixth episode of my Launchpad tutorial series. In this episode, we're gonna find out how to make light effects that react to your button presses. We're gonna play some light effects live, and we're gonna learn how to make those with basic MIDI effects and Ableton Live's chains. We have to set up our MIDI outputs again. The outputs should be set up the same way we set them up in the previous episode, and this is how we're gonna set them up for any kind of light effect work we do. So we arm the track, we change into user mode, and now we get back live feedback based on which buttons we press. Similarly to when we were working with samples and instruments, we're gonna build all light effects down here in this area where the chain resides. This chain is gonna be created of MIDI effects, which are gonna process the incoming signals and create some kind of altered output. When I press the button here, you can see this here a little bit lights up. This means that a signal is traveling across the chain. Currently there is no chain, so there is no processing applied to this node, and it comes back to me as it is. Today we're only gonna look into the most basic effects that can manipulate this note into something we want to achieve. The first and simplest effect is the pitch effect. The pitch will change or transpose the location of the button that was pressed. So if I press this button here, it's pitching it by zero semitones, which means it doesn't move at all. But say I want to pitch it down one semitone and then press it. Now my light effect will appear one to the left, no matter where I press because it takes the note that I give it by pressing a button and it moves it one to the left. Here it's important to know the order of buttons. It's always important to know it. It's the same as in the drum rack. So if I go cross here, this is the one that's previous. Now we can move a note by any given value. It can be a very large distance or it can be a very short distance as we've seen earlier. And we can also move it onto the side buttons here. The side buttons come directly after this button here. Next, we're gonna have a look at the chord. The chord is similar to the pitch, but the main difference is it's not only going to move the note, but it's also going to keep the original one in its place. So if I press this note here and use my chord to shift it, say, minus one semitones, then I will get an additional note created to the left. Now I can add more notes to this, and now I get a whole line of notes. The order of buttons also applies here. There's a slight limitation to these, and that's that they can only go for up to 36 steps. We can't move them past this here range. Next we have the velocity effect. This effect controls which color is displayed by the light effect. The launchpad uses a hard-coded palette that was designed by Novation, and there's a chart displaying all of the available colors. You can see it right now on the screen, or you can get the picture in the link in the description. This graph displays how the velocities that we input are gonna be mapped to the output velocity that is defined by our parameters. We can play around with these values in order to change how this graph looks like. The out high is gonna manipulate this here bit of the graph, and the out low is gonna manipulate this here bit of the graph. When working with a launchpad MK2, only the out high value matters because the launchpad is only ever going to give a velocity of 127, which is the max velocity for a button press. For launchpad covers, you can either change the out high and out low value to the same value in order to get a certain color. White is also on tree. We can get a nice blue color by typing in 45. You can use the fixed mode, which disables everything but the out high, and then you can specify the velocity you want here. The drive and comp values are not particularly useful to us. Then we have the note length effect. This overrides how long we're gonna hold the note for. For example, no matter how long I hold this note now, the light effect is only going to be displayed for 100 milliseconds. We can change this value if we want to something like one second. Of course, it also stays on as I release it. Or we can take a really short value, like 10 milliseconds, where we barely even get to see the light effect happening. The gate dial is useful because it can multiply the length that's displayed here. So if I type in one second and give it a gate of 200%, this is going to last for two seconds because one second times 200% is two seconds. Usually you're not gonna be using the time mode to define the length, but rather you'll be using the sync mode, which is going to make your length relative to the BPM of the live set. So for example, I can do 116, which is 1 16th of a bar. So this is one bar and 1 16th of a bar is this here duration. There's also a note off mode, which is going to make this slide effect trigger only when the note is released or turned off. So now that I release the note, I get this effect on my screen. 
And finally, we're going to learn about the random device, which is going to make the launchpad display something different every time we press the button. There's the random mode, which is going to randomize the position of the light effect. Of course, we have to give it a chance. So a chance of 100% is going to make the node different every single time we press the button. And here's the range for which we want the position to be randomized. Usually we're not going to be using the random mode, but rather we're going to be using the alternating mode, which means that the random will loop through all of the positions in a consistent ascending order. We can make it iterate in a descending order by selecting sub. The scale defines how much every node should be distanced by. So for example, a scale of four is only going to make us iterate through a column because there are four buttons in a row. And now let's have a look at how we can chain multiple of these to create a nice looking light effect. First, we can use a pitch to move our input up by 12 semitones, for example. This is gonna place our note here. Now we can use a chord to move this here note into a row. Now we can add another chord after that in order to create an additional row. And then we can keep one more chord to move it to the other side of the launch pad. And finally, let's use a velocity to give it a nice red color. And we can also use a note length to make it stay on the screen for a little while. You can chain these devices in any order you like. All you have to know is that each of them will process the output of the previous one. So this velocity device is going to process the output of this core device. And that core device is going to process the output of the one before it. At the end, when the note reaches the final device, it exits the chain and goes directly into our launch pad. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments as always, and I'm going to answer them as soon as I can. See you in the next video. Bye.